Hello and welcome back to another video. Uh, this video is going to be a brand new video in our series on how to learn VBA code in Excel the fun way. And I've been wanting to make this video for a while or these video series for a while because I have learned many different languages in coding and the one method that has really stuck with me over the years is a method that I was taught when I was working at a factory and I was taught how to code CMM machines basically by doing this method that I'm going to show you. And it's a very simple method. We are going to be programming very simple video games inside of VBA. And doing this, it's a fun way to get interactive with Excel and you really get down into the nitty gritty of what makes the components work inside of VBA. So it's really fun. Now, these lessons, they are for everyone from the beginner lessons of VBA all the way up to the skilled programmers. So if you'd like to just look at this in a different way, or maybe you just like to learn very simple ways of doing things, or maybe you're just jumping into VBA for the first time, these videos are for you. And in fact, most of the games that we're going to be making are very short as far as the codes are concerned. So what we're going over today First off, we're going to be creating a video game that is a random number guesser, and it's going to be a programmable game where you can guess the number that the computer is thinking of. Now, this is a very simple co code. It's only about 50 lines of code long, and I'm going to be stepping you through the entire process of how to do this. First off, what we're going to need to do, and if we look on our outline right here, we're going to have to enable the Developer tab. And you may notice that on a vanilla version of Microsoft Excel, or uh, for those of you not familiar with the term, um, ver the default version of Microsoft Excel, it does not have the developer tab enabled. So how you do that is very simple. You go to file and you go to options and then you go to customize ribbon and over on the right hand side you can see the developer tab is right here and if you check that on and hit OK you'll notice that a developer tab was populated up at the top. Now this is not needed right away, but you will need to have this enabled for later on. So that's what the, the develop, developer tab looks like. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and we're going to open the VBA editor. And how you can do that, you can either click this Visual Basic right here, or you can hold down Alt and hit F11 on your keyboard. It'll pop up the same thing. So inside of here, we're going to need to populate something called a module, which is where we're going to put our code. So we right click right here on our workbook. We go to insert and module. And right here is a blank module for us to put our code into. Now I previously have this code copied over on the other side. So I'm going to copy and paste it right here. I'm going to step through what all this code is. So just so it's easier to see, I'm going to bring this over in a Word document right here so I can zoom in on it. Okay, and this is exactly the same code that we have over in our Excel document. So what this is, this right here, dim, is what you want to say whenever you're trying to declare something. So if you're declaring something, for instance, the starting num, which is going to be the number that we're starting with, I'm going to click, I'm going to type in dim and then starting num, and I'm going to say what it is. So I'm going to declare the variable starting num as integer. Now starting num, it can be anything you want it to be. That's just a placeholder for a name. It's something that you can remember what it's called. It doesn't matter what this is. You could rename it to anything you want. What's important is you declare it right here as a dim and you say what it is. So it's declared as an integer. So this is going to be our starting number. This is going to be our ending number. So we have that declared as an integer. This is going to be the random number that's generated by the machine and it's also declared as an integer. And this is going to be our previous number so we can remember where we're at and we can say if we're getting closer or farther away or something along those lines. Now all of this is declared before we start our actual program. So this is declared way before. The sub means that it is a subroutine or it is what the program is actually going to run. So in our case this is going to be sub start random generated game. 
and this is the program. So as soon as we click our program and we start running it, it's going to declare the starting number and we're going to say the starting number is 1. That is the lowest number it could possibly be. Our ending number is going to be 100, so that is the highest number we want it to be. And you can change these to be anything you want. So let's say you want to have the random number generator be in between 2 and 10. You can change that right here. Now the random number, we always want to start back over at 0, so it doesn't have a value. And the previous number, it wants to be 0 as well, because, again, we haven't put in a value yet. Now this little bit of code right here, it's actually kind of frowned down upon in the programming world. It basically says that if there's an error, just go on to the next code. In actuality, you want to set this up to have a catch on there to where, hey, why did it trigger an error? Let's try and fix it. Let's send an error message, something like that. But for this tutorial, we're just going to leave this alone as on error, resume next. Okay, now inside of the program, once we click, so the start game generator, we're still inside of it, we are going to have an if statement. And if statements work like this. We are going to say that if something that we have previously declared, for instance, the starting number. So we're going to say that if the starting num is equal to 1, then, and then we're going to continue this code right down here. And whenever you do an if statement, you always want to end the statement so it knows, hey, the statement is ending right there. So that's an example of an if statement. Now, this is just a standard one layer if statement. If you want to go even further, you can even say else. So this means that everything else that is not this if statement. So if say that starting num equals two, then it will jump down here to the else and it'll run this code here. So that's what an if statement is. So going back to our code, we have if random generated number equals zero, which is going to be right here, that signifies that it is the beginning of the game. So if it equals 0, then the random generator equals, and this code right here is the code that is used to generate a random number. Basically, you say that it's an integer, so it doesn't have any decimal points or anything like that. That's what INT means. It's short for integer. And the integer is going to be the ending number minus the starting number, plus 1, so that means, you know, it's a good starting point. That's where it's going to be started. And then it's going to be multiplied by a random number, which is going to be randomly assigned, and then it's going to plus the starting number again. Basically, this is Excel's version of a random number. Okay, so if the random generated number is 0, then we're going to come down here, go to the next one. We are now going to declare a boolean, and I don't know exactly how to properly say that. It's either boolean or it's bleen or something like that. I'm not really for sure. I've always, I've always said it to be boolean because that's the way I look at it. It basically means a true or false statement, so it's either a yes or a no. So dim got it, so I'm declaring got it as a true or false statement. And then I'm going to say that got it is false. So then I'm going to add in an extra string. Now a string is basically words. That's all it is. It's kind of like a sentence. So I'm going to declare extra string as a string. And then the extra string equals zero or equals nothing. And I'll explain that right down here. Next is the do until got equals true. So that means we are going to do whatever is inside of here continuously until got it equals true. And when got it is going to equal true is whenever the user has exactly the same number as a random generator. So then it equals true and then it pops out of the loop. So inside of this loop, this section right here, the dim result as variant, this is what we're going to be using to declare if the number that was generated is correct. And it's going to ask for the user to input different numbers. So the previous number, if it's greater than zero, which means that a user has actually entered a number, because as you remember up here, we declared the previous number as zero. 
If the previous number is greater than 0, then we're going to jump down here to this if statement. If previous number is greater than the random number, then the extra string equals number of and previous number was too high. Try again. That basically means that if the previous number was a higher number than the random generated number, it's going to have this extra string say number of and then whatever you typed in was too high. Try again. Now on the other hand, else, which means it was not larger than the previous number, then it's going to say extra string equals number of previous number was too low. Try again. So that's basically a way to help gauge where the number is at. Now for the user input. Now this is a very simple code. Basically we have declared up here result as variant. Variant means that it can be basically anything. So we're going to say that the variant is an input box. And the input box says I am thinking of a number between whatever the starting number was and whatever the end number was. Then I cut down here and I type in this little bit which is VB new line. This means that in the text box it's going to populate a new line. So it's kind of like hitting enter. And then on the new line I'm going to have the extra string which we declared right here. And then I'm going to add a new line again which then says which number do you want to guess. Then a new line again. It also says down here as a way to stop the game if you want to just type in stop in all caps. And then it says guess a number for the title. This zero right here is the default value that the box is going to populate with. And now we get to the last little bit of our code. If the result which we declared right up here as being the user input is not, that's what this means, is not the random number, then got it equals false, which means we are going to keep looping this until got it equals true. And then the previous number equals result. So we can later, whenever it populates again, we can calculate the previous number and see if it's higher or lower. Now on the other hand, if the result is not the random generator, this else means that if it is the random number, got it equals true, and message box says, you win, yay. And then down at the very bottom, the last of it says, if the result equals stop, then exit sub. The last line is loop, which will tell it, hey, this is still in the do statement, so we're going to loop right back up, and it continues the code. So let's see what that looks like over here. This is all of the code that I previously mentioned. It's all broken down. You can see the colors of it. And the final step that we are going to do, we need to go back into Excel right here, and we need to go into the Developer tab, and we need to click Insert and Button. And what this is going to do, this is going to allow us to select our macro that we have just made, Start Random Gen Game, hit OK, and whenever we click on this button, it is going to start our random number game. So if I click off of here, all I have to do is click this again, and there we have it. We have our game. So I am thinking of a number between 1 and 100. Which number do you want to guess? Type stop to end game. So I'm going to type in 10, and we'll see what that looks like. 10, it says... I'm thinking of number between 1 and 100. The number of 10 was too low. Try again. Which number do you want to guess? So I'm going to try 90. Hit OK. And as you can see, it says number of 90 was too high. Try again. So this is our random number generator. And you can continue on playing this game. You can see that it's in between 50 and 90. So yeah, this is a very simple game, about 50 lines of code, and it can really show you what you can do with just a random number generator. Just a few lines of code in Excel. You can make a, you know, decently fun game. So let's see if I can get this number correct. 70. Okay, so it's 71. There we go. You win. Yay. And then that's the end of the game. I hope that this video has helped you. I hope that you've enjoyed it. We'll be back again with another video and a little bit more of an in-depth game. Now, this game was very simple. 
I probably went through it a little quickly. I hope you were able to follow along. The source code will be down in the description below. You are more than welcome to try this out for yourself. If you like this video, like, subscribe, leave a comment. It really helps us out. And if you really hated this video, then share it with all your friends and let them watch it. Until next time, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful, fantastic day.